Hey, what's happening, guys? If you take a look here, you'll see an oscilloscope. We've talked about oscilloscope. You know what oscilloscopes are, right? Well, this is its cousin, a spectrum analyzer. This was sent to me by viewer Mike. Mike, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. This is incredible. I am very appreciative to receive this. This is the Tiny SA, the Tiny Spectrum Analyzer. These have been out for a couple years now. I think this is the screen. This is version 0.3.1. And it is tiny. It is absolutely minuscule. Look at that. Wow. So we got what's probably a TFT LCD here, which is also touchscreen. We have high in and out, low in and out. We've got a USB-C. We've got kind of like a chalk wheel here for control. And a little power switch. And there's nothing on there, so obviously we're not going to pick anything up. So what else is in the box? Why? A web link to https colon slash slash tiny sa dot org slash looked like they meant to put something there but there's nothing there here we have our wrist strap and wow must have known I was a guitar player there's a guitar pick which I would never be able to hold on to because it is far too slippy but that's not what it's for. It's for touching the screen. Ah, okay. Here's what was supposed to go here. This is a female to female SMA connector. We have a small telescoping antenna with an SMA connector on it. We have two, what about six inch, maybe eight inch SMA connectors or wires rather. And another stylus so let's uh follow their suggestion and go have a look on this page and see what's up with this okay so here we are over on the tiny sa wiki important information says the tiny sa are small spectrum analyzers and signal generator tiny sa that's what we have the size is 2.8 inch. It is a spectrum analyzer with two inputs, high quality, medium frequency, high frequency, very high frequency input. For 0 0.1 megahertz to 350 megahertz and a lesser quality UHF input for 240 megahertz to 960 megahertz. Or it is a signal generator with two output sine wave outputs from 0.1 to 350 and 240 to 960 when not used as a spectrum analyzer. It has switchable bandpass filters for both ranges, color display. Then there's also the Tiny SA Ultra, which is bigger and has some more interesting things. Now let's look here at the Tiny SA limitations. Internal phase noise sets a clear lower limit for phase noise measurements. That's, there's going to be some internal noise in this device just based on the proximity of all the components to each other and what they had to do to make this work. So your noise floor is probably going to be a little bit higher. Your signal is not going to be as clean as a $10,000 signal analyzer or <laughs> spectrum analyzer. But you didn't pay $10,000 for it. These are less than $100. So accept the limitations because it's probably not going to matter for you. All right, minimum resolution bandwidth of 2.4 kilohertz makes it impossible to see more spectral details. So they're saying this is as small as you can go, 2.4 kilohertz, which is pretty small. I mean, yeah, I have no idea what, what you'd want to do with this, but, you know, in my uses, probably 20 kilohertz is as small as I need to go. If high input has very limited image suppression and only one level optional built-in attenuator. Okay. So basically they're just telling us, this isn't a $10,000 spectrum analyzer. 
Understood. All right, let's go first use. Uh, after impacting it's in this point, charge it. After charging, the USB cable can remain connected or disconnected. The next steps are explained in video on first use. Execute these steps. Use one of the supplied SMA cables to connect the low port to the high port. Power the tiny SMA using the tiny switch at the top. Touch the screen to activate the menu system. Config self-test. Let's do that. What do you say? Let's self-test this. Fuck up. All right, now let's keep in mind that I have never used this particular spectrum analyzer before and I while I've used spectrum analyzers in general they're not my speciality that would be the oscilloscope this is more for radio frequency things which is not something I dealt with I was a power supply guy so I'm not an expert that's what I'm telling you well we're already seeing the station I wanted to look at right there 103.5 because it's sweeping the entire band I believe so let's let's find out so if we go to frequency, start is at zero hertz, stop is at 350, yeah. But let's change that to 30. To 300 megs. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to sweep most of this, this low input here. So we're, t we're, we're seeing two traces, two signals, whatever you want to call it here. 103.5, which is about minus 70 dBm. How do we get to the second trace? Trace, trace one. Trace two. Enable. No, I don't see it. Trace one. Oh, that would be for an entirely different input. Okay. How do we change signals? Oh, I'm going to go to tinysa.org and figure that out. All right, I believe it's under marker. Marker ops. Modify markers. Marker one. Marker one. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. So the marker is controlled with the little jog wheel on top. So if I move it, you can see I can move the marker to any peak that I want. There we go. So that particular peak is 186.02 megahertz at minus 70. Now there's some other neat features in here. Like, if we come back down here to display, we can turn on a waterfall display. How cool is that? If any of you guys are hams, you are familiar with the waterfall display. If you've ever seen the uh, iconic 7300 by ICOM, I'm sure there are more that have it now. Now, I expected this sweep to be incredibly slow on this waterfall. But this is not much slower than my 7300. That's not too bad at all. All right, let's go back here. Let me turn off our waterfall. It does not appear to have turned it off. I'll just reset it somehow. Okay. Let's see if we can change our resolution and what that will do. So that should be under frequency, I'm guessing. Start, stop, center, span, zero, span. RBW, resolution, bandwidth? Yes. So we can start at the largest here, <clears throat> 600. 
and there's not much change. 300. Now you can see it's getting a little, a little bit wider there. We're picking up a little bit of resolution. And we can see there are a couple other peaks in there. 100 hertz. Oh, now we can see that green scan line is really starting to slow down as we dig in here. We go down to 30 kilohertz. Look at that scan line moving now. And now we're stepping. Yeah, now we're stepping. Now on the larger uh, spectrum analyzers I've used, there should be a way to put this as the center span. 186.02. Let's put it in. If any of you guys know how to do that, you know, let me know. Here comes our scan. Could have swore I typed in 02. That says 48. But it's close enough, which is what I want. I just wanted to get it closer to the middle. Now, this slowly, steadily increasing noise you see here is probably all household noise from my LED lights and stuff. All right, let's go down to. 10 kilohertz this is going to be real slow so i'll pause it and we'll come back when the scan is done all right it's been well over a minute and it's not even halfway so let's let's just go back up to 600. see now we're seeing a nice sweep remember i told you i thought there was a way i think it's under marker back marker marker ops oh yeah center so that should center us on the marker Let's try it by moving the marker to this peak over here. You don't really have to do this with individual clicks. This is rather slow doing it like this. There's probably a better way. I don't know what it is. There we go. So it's centered on that marker. Am I moving the whole screen? That's interesting. All right. Let's try something else. All right. Turns out there is an easier way <laughs> to move the markers. All you have to do is kind of go... Whoosh, and you know click and drag and it'll jump from one peak to the next now the number one marker is the tracking marker there we go let's see uh, back config Spur removal, yeah. Let's take off spur removal and see what happens. Well, it definitely slowed down our skin, but it also dropped the noise floor. Let's go to uh, the frequency, yeah, resolution bandwidth, and we'll put it on auto. That kind of sped it up a little bit. Now, the one, number one uh, tracking marker should always, according to the instructions, be heading to the highest signal on the screen. So, anyway, here's what I wanted to talk about. The, the question I always get when I show a piece of equipment is, why? Why do you have this? What can you do with it? Well, most test equipment is used for troubleshooting and uh, repairing equipment. Uh, oscilloscopes can be used for just about any type of measurement where you need to see what the signal looks like 
over time. Um, a multimeter shows you instantaneous measurements. Well, the spectrum analyzer, which in itself is really nothing, oops, but a radio receiver. That's really all this is, is a radio receiver. And then it has firmware, well, a radio receiver that receives the signals and decodes them. Then this thing is going to digitize them, pass it through its firmware to make its calculations and show you the output. But at its heart, this, this is a radio receiver. And they're incredibly useful in repairing other radios. So let's say you're working on a radio and you're not sure if it is transmitting. Here's a radio. This is the Baofeng <clears throat> UV5R, the cheapest ham radio on the face of the earth. And people say it uh, doesn't stick to its bandwidth. I think it does. And one thing we can do is take a look at that. So I will turn this on. Frequency mode. And this is 146.5 megahertz, which is in the FM simplex band called the calling frequency. I am a licensed ham radio operator. You can't do this without being one. That would be illegal here in the United States. Anyway, so I'm going to key the mic and I'm going to announce myself as well. And you will be able to see probably a very large signal here. But one thing I want to do, because I don't want to blow this thing up, is I'm going to bring that antenna way down. And I am going to take this antenna way over here, arms reach apart. And I will key the mic. You keep an eye on the spectrum analyzer for me and tell me if you see something. Testing. Did you see that there? Now, let's do this. Let's go frequency center uh, 146.5 uh, do it right Paul 146.5 megahertz so now that is the center frequency right here and when I key the mic WW again see that becomes in our center frequency let's uh, Display, sweep big number, sweep time, sweep points, sweep accuracy. Yeah, if we go to sweep points, what we can do to make this faster would be to uh, go to lesser points and then sweep accuracy, normal, precise, fast. Let's try this in fast mode. WDR testing. Look pretty good. Let's do it in precise mode. See, now we're getting a little slower of a scan here. Here we go. Double testing. It's a little slower. I guess the readings are a little more accurate. I guess I would just leave it in normal mode. WR is clear this frequency. So, pretty cool. I'm going to learn more about it. And hopefully I will find some really good uses for it here in some upcoming videos. I think I just might have a CW, which you would, if you're not a radio guy, would call Morse code uh, transceiver kit that I can put together. And this will be excellent for testing it. So once again, I want to thank Mike for sending this. I want to thank you for watching this, and I want to say I wish every one of you peace on earth this holiday season. God bless you. I'm out.